Well, now back to John in Manchester. Where the Labour Party conference um, has seen delegates uh, with a passionate attempt by Ed Miliband to capture moderate Conservative voters in a bold speech without text and entirely from memory. The Labour leader painted his opponent as incompetent millionaires but invoked the Tory epithet One Nation, saying only Labour could govern for the whole of Great Britain. That is my faith. One nation, a country for all, with everyone playing their part. A Britain we rebuild together. Thank you very much. With a passion few of the delegates here in this hall had seen, the Labour leader Ed Miliband proclaimed, I believe in one nation, but does that nation believe in him? And will this invoking of the mantra of Benjamin Disraeli, the Tory Victorian Prime Minister, do anything to improve his still dire personal opinion poll ratings? William Hill have cut the odds on Ed Miliband becoming the next Prime Minister, but in the marginal constituencies, Mr Miliband still has a lot of work to do. Our political correspondent, Michael Craig, has been out of the conference bubble in Cheshire, talking to voters. In the heart of Cheshire, the amazing Anderson boat lift, letting vessels move between the River Weaver and the Trent and Mersey Canal high above. A Victorian monument bringing together different levels. This extraordinary piece of engineering was built in 1875 when Benjamin Disraeli was Tory Prime Minister. For Ed Miliband to get the chance to carry out his style of one-nation socialism, he'll need plenty of floating voters. Upriver in Northwich, a swing bridge in the swing seat of Weaver Vale. Labour, before 2010, now with a Tory majority of less than a 1,000. And this lunchtime, voters seem to reflect an overnight poll suggesting barely one in five voters think Mr Miliband would make a good Prime Minister. So you don't think, you don't think he's got what it takes? No, I don't. No. But, but why not? Well, he just got, I don't know. Whether it's just the way he presents himself, I think. So do you think Miliband's got what it takes to be Prime Minister? Possibly, because he's, he's got that sort of stupid look about him, really, hasn't he? So, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you like your Prime Ministers to be stupid looking? <laughs> well, I prefer when they've got a bit of maturity about them, so they've got a bit of common sense, really, but he's, he's too young. He's too baby-faced for me, to be honest. You know who it is? Yes. Go on. It's um, one of the Milliman. No. Osborne, you think it is? <laughs> no, it's Ed Milliband, isn't it? It is, yeah. yes. <laughs> He's got big hands. Well, that's just the photograph, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do, um, I'm not sure. It's quite quirky, isn't he? I just don't feel that he has the same level of strength of character and determination uh, and level of ability as his brother does. Do you think he would make a good Prime Minister? Difficult to say. Um, initial impressions of him. It doesn't seem that appealing, but the more I listen to him speak, he does, you know, he does grow on you, really. You know, he shouldn't be the lucky few. Now, Labour hopes tomorrow's party broadcast will swing more people like that, with more detail on Miliband's supposedly ordinary background. I think anybody with Ed's experience and background in that kind of school environment must be good for this country. But the Tory MP for this part of Cheshire accuses him of class war. Well, he may have gone to a uh, comprehensive school, but he's far from an ordinary guy. He comes from a, uh, a Labour political family. His father was a Marxist communist uh, intellectual lecturer from Primrose Hill, the Primrose Hill sect, and uh, had lots of connections with senior Labour politicians throughout his early childhood. But maybe in rebuilding Labour, Ed Miliband's One Nation theme will finally make him look prime ministerial in places like this.